Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to this webinar. My name is Sira Marqueta, and I'll be hosting today's webinar brought to you by the Zaragoza Logistics Center in Spain. Before we get started, I would like to remind you that the link to our corporate video is available on the chat. And also, in order to not have any technical issue, we would appreciate that you mute your audio, disconnect your camera, and check your speakers are turned on. All this considered, let's get to the point. And during today's session, we'll be discussing about the blended itinerary of the MIT Zaragoza Master of Engineering in Logistics and Supply Chain Management, also known as CELOG-B. We'll talk about applications requirements, also the program content, job opportunities, and international experience at MIT and here in Spain. You will also hear about the students' experience as one of our graduates from last year is joining us today. So thanks, Hamid, for sharing, for sharing your time with us today. And last but not least, I want to let you know that we'll have a Q&A interactive session. You can use the chat to leave your message and I'll read them at the end of the presentation. So that's it. I hope everybody enjoys the webinar today and you are all staying safe and healthy at your homes. Tonight, it's time to meet our presenters, Marta Romero, Director of International Masters at CLC, and Hani Alkatib, Logistics Head of Sector at the Red Cross in Switzerland. So thank you both for being here today. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Sira, and uh, welcome again, everybody. So first off, uh, already Sira mentioned, but I hope all of you, your families, and everyone that is dear to you is safe. These are unprecedented times, so we're just trying to cope the best that we can. I'm myself, Marta Romero. I'm the director of the international programs here at uh, CLC. I said here at CLC when I'm actually at home, but <laughs> uh, the idea is that uh, once we're back there where you see the picture, that's our center. Uh, that's where our classes usually take place. And I'm uh, really proud and happy that uh, Hani could join us today. Hani is a graduate from uh, last year, so he's from the second generation of the Blended program. So Hani, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Yes, sure. Hi everyone, uh, as Marta said, I'm a proud uh, ZLC alumni. A uh, little a bit about myself. Uh, uh, I have been working the supply chain for more than 12 years, uh, most of it in the humanitarian sector. Uh, I've been living and working in various countries from Syria, Yemen, Jordan, Somalia, uh, Kenya, and currently I'm working and based in Geneva, Switzerland. Okay, thanks, Hani. So I see that uh, some of the participants' uh, names uh, uh, are very familiar. So I've, uh, I've spoken to some of you already. We have exchanged emails uh, with some of you as well. And for some of you, this will be the first interaction that uh, we're going to have together. So I hope that uh, together with Hani, we will be able to answer all the questions that uh, you may have. I'm sure that uh, you will be more interested in knowing uh, things from Hani since uh, he was in your shoes a while ago. Uh, before he decided to start uh, with the online courses and then when he decided to join us in Zaragoza. So whenever uh, it's the turn uh, for Q&A, uh, we will be happy to, have, to answer any questions that you have. So without further ado, let's move on to our presentation. So we're going to talk mainly about the Blended program, but we will also talk about the other two programs that uh, CLC has, the international programs. Uh, so first of all, uh, as you can see on the screen, this is the MIT scale, uh, Global Scale Network. Scale stands for Supply Chain and Logistics Excellence. In fact, the network is uh, an international alliance of leading research and education centers that is dedicated to supply chain and logistics excellence through innovation. Uh, as you will see, so everybody knows MIT, of course. So MIT was uh, the, the pioneer center. Uh, last year, they celebrated their 20th anniversary and back in 2003, when uh, CLC was created, it was by chance that uh, Joshi Sheffi, the director of uh, the Center for Transportation and Logistics and the rector of the University of Zaragoza, they met at an event. And uh, they thought, okay, why not replicate what we have at MIT? So that was back in 2003. So it's been a while now. Uh, we also celebrated our 15th anniversary last year. And uh, the current class uh, which uh, will graduate in May uh, will be the uh, sixth generation, of course. As you can see on the map, so there are other centers that uh, are affiliated to the global scale network. So first, uh, it was us, as we mentioned, 
uh, then in 2008, uh, Center for Latin America uh, was opened in Colombia. This is a bit uh, different uh, regarding the other programs and the other centers because they do not offer master's degree, they do offer certification and they work closely with universities. Um, the next center that opened was uh, MISI in Malaysia in, in 2011 and the uh, newcomers were Luxembourg and China in 2015 and 2016, uh, respectively. All in all, we have 14 educational programs uh, among the scale centers. We have more than uh, 100 academic partners that uh, work uh, hand in hand and together with uh, our students on some of the thesis projects. Uh, over 100 researchers and faculty members. And we also have uh, over 200 uh, corporate partners that uh, work with all the different centers. As you can see now, so uh, these are the international programs that, uh, that we have uh, uh, at the center, uh, two which are uh, full-time. So the uh, Master of Engineering in Logistics and Supply Chain uh, uh, Management program uh, called uh, CILOG. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is the 16th generation. Uh, we have created a new path, a new itinerary, uh, which is the Global Supply Chain Management program in collaboration with our center in Malaysia. Uh, that it's uh, going to start uh, for this academic year. And then of course the program that uh, we will talk about uh, later on. So as you will see, uh, the, the, the part that all the three programs have in common is to stay at MIT in, in January. So if you are planning on uh, joining us uh, for the blended program, then you will start at MIT in January and you continue with your studies in Zaragoza from February onwards until the end of May. If you were interested in the CELOC program, then uh, it's nine months in Spain, three weeks at MIT. If you're interested in the new itinerary, so that would be four months in, in Zaragoza at the beginning of the academic year, the three weeks at MIT, and then uh, you would move on to, uh, to living in Malaysia and studying in the uh, campus in, in MISI. Uh, this is a picture that uh, we really liked a lot. So this is, uh, of course, uh, Zaragoza. It's our city. Uh, that's uh, where our center is located. Uh, nowadays, it's, uh, uh, as most of the cities and everywhere in the world, so it's deserted. It's, it's really sad. Uh, just to give you some information about the city, so it's the fifth largest city of Spain, and uh, within uh, 300 kilometers, uh, we cover 70% of Spain's uh, GDP. Uh, we reach 25 million people by highway, so mainly Madrid, Barcelona, also Valencia, and Toulouse in France. We are a uh, thousand kilometers, that is a uh, one day uh, track drive from uh, all Spain, Portugal, also France. Uh, part of Belgium, part of Germany, and also part of Northern Africa. Uh, Raid and road connection, so we are close to the three Mediterranean and Atlantic ports. Uh, we are one hour and 20 minutes only by high-speed train from Madrid and Barcelona. And we have uh, five international airports within uh, 300 kilometers. So uh, living in, uh, in Zaragoza, it's super fun. And uh, that's when I would like to hand it over to, to Hani so that he can uh, share with you his experience living here. Uh, thank you, Marta. I think I'm a bit biased when it comes to Zaragoza. It's a, it's a place when uh, has a special place in my heart. I think like living in a city, it's a personal and how you like a city, it's a personal preference. However, Zaragoza can easily charm uh, everyone. It's a, it's a lively place. Uh, depends what you like, nightlife or going out or, 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 or any activity you have, you have, you can find your way within it. It's urban uh, uh, architecture. Uh, it's, it's fascinating for me from uh, Mercado Central to uh, Slaughterhouse of uh, Salvador Allende. Uh, if you like to cook and, and, and with the fresh ingredient and very tasty one, you can go to the market, uh, which is very centrally located. If you don't, then you can have a three course meal uh, in a very nice uh, places uh, uh, in a very affordable uh, price. Um, and I think most of you uh, have an idea uh, about Spain and their culture in a way, so you can picture everything you, uh, you hear or, or, uh, or stereotype about Spanish cuisine, culture and people. Zaragoza has a different level because it has a, a layer of uh, authenticity to it uh, uh, on top of all of that. Uh, I always say one day I will come back and I'm sure I will uh, uh, to visit Zaragoza and the people of Zaragoza. We'll be happy to have you back, honey. Will do. Okay, so uh, the, the Zaragoza Logistics Center, so it's a, a research and educational institute on supply chain management affiliated with the University of Zaragoza. This is actually uh, the building where our offices are located. 
So we are in, uh, in Expo. Uh, Expo is the economic uh, business center of uh, Zaragoza. As you can see, this was, uh, this was uh, used by, uh, by the city for a universal exhibition in 2008. So it has been transformed now into this economic business center. So there's 11,000 square meters. And uh, today uh, there is 82% of the space that is occupied. Overall, there's uh, 56 uh, companies. So th 36 are private and 16 are public. And there's over 4,000 uh, people working in, in those facilities. Uh, it's uh, very well located. Uh, we have uh, five cafeterias uh, very close by, a medical center. You also have a convention center. There's parks, there's sports. It's close to a small and a big supermarket chain. And it's also very important uh, when we have any visits from uh, companies who want to come to recruit or for thesis presentation. We're literally five minutes away from uh, the other high-speed train and also to the main road network. So that's a big plus. Uh, the, the students uh, this year, uh, uh, they decided that uh, uh, they, they wanted to get the, the scooters. So some of the students are coming to the center uh, on scooter. Others come uh, by metro. Uh, needless to say that Zaragoza, even if it's the fifth largest city of Spain, it's um, 700,000 population. It's not such a big city as, men, as Hani mentioned. So it's affordable. And uh, living expenses are, are, are very low uh, compared to all the big cities like uh, Madrid, Barcelona, or other European cities. Um, if we also talk about our affiliation, so of course uh, we are affiliated with the University of Zaragoza, which is the university that will grant the diplomas, and also with MIT. Within MIT, uh, I'm sure that most of you know that uh, we are affiliated with the Center for Transportation and Logistics. And within uh, the Center for Transportation and Logistics, we are affiliated with the Supply Chain Management Program, which is the sister program of the CIROC program, and also with uh, the blended uh, program over there, which is also the sister program of uh, our program. Uh, important to mention as well that uh, our programs have been uh, highly recognized in, in the rankings. So, uh, so number one in the MIT scale uh, masters in supply chain, which is very specific then again, uh, to supply chain worldwide with Edu Universal, with supply chain management world, we've been ranked number four. And uh, those of you who are Spanish and who know the newspaper El Mundo, so for the past nine years, uh, nine consecutive years, we've been number one. Uh, so we are all very proud, and this is all thanks to our faculty members and also to our students, uh, because I mean, the, uh, they become uh, members of the uh, uh, Zaragoza Logistics Center when they graduate. And they also help in the future uh, with companies uh, coming to recruit and also uh, bringing in uh, projects for, for the students in some of the program. And this guy here, I mean, uh, I'm not just going to say you, you can read uh, what, what he's written because if uh, some of you have completed the uh, five online courses, I'm sure that you've seen plenty of him. So he's Chris Kaplis. Uh, he's the executive director of the Center for Transportation and, and Logistics. Uh, if you are studying, uh, so there's, there's, there's one of the uh, supply chain analytics course, uh, which is ongoing at the moment. If you just started, uh, you'll get to see him as well. And uh, if you join uh, one of our programs, uh, you'll get to meet him personally in January. So we talked about the international master's program, but we also have some other programs in the center. So the, the ones that you can see on the left of your screen are the international programs. We also have a master uh, in, uh, in supply chain management that is taught in Spanish and which is part-time. Mm -hmm. So this program is uh, more for uh, students who just graduated or for people who can combine work with uh, studies. We have a PhD program. We also run a PhD summer academy and we have executive education courses. So in executive education, we have both uh, tailor-made programs as well as open program. So if uh, now we move on to what the blender is, and uh, I would like to hand it over to Hani as well. So because as I mentioned, and I'm sure that some of you are at different stages now. So some of you may not have known us until recently. Some of you are uh, taking some of the courses. Some of you are deciding what do I do with the MicroMasters afterwards. So Hani was in this situation a while ago. So would you like to share your experience and uh, what made you go for the online courses, get the accreditation and then apply for the blended program? I, I would try to be neutral on this one. I, I think <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the obvious reason, uh, going to the blended uh, uh, 
first, it, it, I think it's 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 a it's a nice model uh, uh, of of giving uh, the opportunity to study something while you're keeping your your uh, your job ongoing. That was for me uh, uh, definitely a plus. And I started like by checking course by course, uh, uh, to be honest. And uh, one after another, I got hooked uh, uh, to it, and I, I was uh, uh, in this process. Uh, as Marta was saying, I'm not sure about your status, but uh, uh, for you who are doing it or planning to doing it, uh, yes, I'm. I'm I sure I, I'm sure I can relate that it's a it's a long process. It took like 15 months, and uh, sometimes you have the feeling, and I think uh, all of you can relate at the moment with this uh, pandemic, like something will never end. I have <laughs> this uh, idea, but everything uh, ends. Nothing remains as it is, and uh, and the award of ending this was was very uh, fulfilling, uh, to be honest. Um, learned a lot uh, uh, from it. Uh, the the idea again, I I was managing to 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 keep my job. Uh, and earning a certificate, a very accredited one, uh, uh, was very good deal on a personal uh, level. It was also challenging to strike the balance between working and studying and social life, which become minimal <laughs> when you do the, the MicroMaster. It's, it's intense, it's heavy, but again, personally, I learned a lot. I, I, I managed to, to, to uh, practically apply a couple of the acquired knowledge during this courses because I was already uh, uh, in my job. So yeah, you can balance it. You can see the, the depends how you approach it. You can see it, yeah, a long process that will ever end or something you can benefit from. You can kind of, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a midway between a full master or online uh, master. So I'm, I'm a fan of this model. I always promote it. I'm already thinking of my next one, probably will not be <laughs> uh, uh, in supply chain, but uh, yeah, it's something I highly uh, advocate for and encourage people uh, to do. Thank you. So as I mentioned uh, briefly, so there is one of the courses which is uh, ongoing at the moment. Uh, it's uh, the SEOX, which is uh, Supply Chain Analytics. Uh, the other ones are Supply Chain Fundamentals that will start sometime in September, Supply Chain Design that will also start in June, Supply Chain Dynamics that uh, starts in September, and Supply Chain Technology and Systems that uh, will also start in June. As Hani said, so it will really depend on uh, what your activity is at the moment. Uh, if you can juggle more than one course at the time, uh, then it's fine. Uh, it, it can take you 12 months to complete. But usually students take between uh, 14, 15 months, uh, 18 months to complete the, the uh, uh, MicroMaster credential. So take all five courses and also take uh, the, uh, the MicroMaster's exam. Uh, just so you know, uh, you know that uh, there is a possibility to take these courses for free. If you really want to continue your education with a blended program, you will need to take it as a verified student. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to submit your application for either of the programs. Uh, just to, do, to let you know also that uh, those five courses and the comprehensive exam are around $1,475. Uh, the blended program itself, uh, so for the four or five months uh, that, uh, that you will be training in MIT and uh, Zaragoza is 17,700 uh, euros. So once you have completed the five online courses, uh, you'll get to spend the three weeks at MIT plus four months uh, in Zaragoza for the completion of the program. What can you expect uh, from, from the program? There's a lot of things that uh, you can expect and that, that uh, we're going to make sure that we're going to provide to you. So first of all, uh, we're going to provide you with an outstanding program. We're also going to provide you with the faculty support that you will need uh, designing the, cl the classes to promote interaction and discussion and also on advising you on your thesis projects. We're going to provide uh, staff support uh, that's on, on the administrative side. So everybody that is part of the CLOC team uh, will be there for you guys uh, for everything that is uh, practical as well as for any personal issues that you may have. And of course, we will provide support in the job market process if needed. Uh, this is a big difference that uh, we find in the blended program regarding the um, residential program is that some of the uh, students in this program are being sponsored by their companies. And of course, they do go back to their companies after completion of the program. Also, what would be the uh, targeted competencies? So what are you going to achieve uh, while in the master's program? So first of all, leadership and teamwork. There's lots of activities uh, where you're going to be able to show your leadership skills and also a lot of teamwork involved in some of the different courses. Of course, uh, analytical thinking. 
uh, data mastering, uh, which is uh, so very important nowadays. Also, change agent skills and receptivity to change. Business capabilities, and last but not least, integrated end-to-end uh, -end supply chain perspective. In a nutshell, this would be the curriculum of the program structure. So we mentioned already the first term, so which will be a long term if you haven't uh, started. Some of you, I know that uh, have completed the, um, the MicroMaster already and are thinking about applying for this academic year. Uh, then uh, when we join MIT uh, in January, so the focus here is leadership and management. Uh, there's a number of activities that uh, take place while we're there and I'll uh, hand it over to Hani later on so that uh, he can give you first-hand information about uh, that part of the program. And this is the part uh, where we are at now, so it's the specialization. There's a couple of core courses uh, which are specific to everyone, but that's the part where we offer the electives. So usually we offer between five or six electives. We need to have five students enrolled in the electives so that uh, this elective can be taught. Unfortunately, so as you well know, uh, uh, so we are on lockdown and uh, the students uh, for, from the blended program only managed to be with us so for the stay at MIT and for a month and a half. But uh, we are continuing with our classes online, so the program hasn't changed and uh, all the classes are taking place remotely nowadays. Uh, this won't be the case uh, for the next academic year because we really hope that uh, uh, this is going to be resolved uh, soon, hopefully during the summer, and that the programs will start normally. If the programs cannot start normally, so in August for the residential programs, then uh, we will consider delaying the programs or even starting online until the situation gets clear. Uh, we hope and we believe that by January, that it's uh, when the blended students join the program in January, uh, everything will be sorted. So that's what we hope. Otherwise, uh, we will have to come up with uh, different options. But the, the plan is to, to go ahead uh, with our programs as, as expected. And this is uh, some pictures of uh, this January when we were there. So we were very happy if you see that picture uh, bottom on your left and the two ladies holding the sign. So these are two CELOC students uh, from uh, the residential program. It is the first time ever that uh, we won uh, the best uh, thesis poster. So that's one of the most important events while we're there, is the uh, research expo. The students get to present their thesis project uh, to a community and, uh, of uh, companies and uh, participants uh, from all the different sectors, so senior executives uh, in, in supply chain. Uh, so those two ladies uh, won the best poster out of uh, more than 80 posters uh, from all the different scale centers. Uh, there's, of course, the picture at the dome with uh, a big group of our students. That was when our residential students and our blended students got to, got, got to meet. And then the other two pictures on the right so are those um, uh, on the top. It's uh, a senior executive from Adidas. And uh, at the bottom is a senior executive from Flexa, and of course the uh, people from MIT. So Chris Kaplis, Josie Sheffy, uh, Katie Date, and uh, Josue Velázquez. Uh, Hani, would you like uh, to say something else about uh, your experience at MIT and uh, what were the activities that uh, took place while you were there? Um, yes, actually, because, uh, yeah, after you, you finish your, your your online model and it's mainly virtual, uh, uh, you are with the screen most of the time, you have the chance to land in MIT and then you meet all these figures that you've been watching uh, virtually and you meet them in person as you can uh, see in the picture. It's a, it's a very nice and smooth landing after this, like uh, after the virtual one. Uh, again, you meet these figures and then you start meeting this is what, when they start to be stranger on the first day and they became then after one month and a half, they are very close uh, classmate, teammate and uh, uh, some of them uh, uh, friend. Activity vary. Uh, it's also intense uh, 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 in a way, but it, it's, it's, it's a melange or mix between work, learning, uh, uh, and fun at the, at the same time. Uh, you find your way between, uh, again, meeting people, socializing, trying to lo uh, know about them, everyone. You have a lot of people coming from all over the globe uh, with a different background and different experience. And, and, and it's not only when it comes to work and supply chain. Uh, you have also like social and, and, and cultural uh, uh, background and learning curve uh, uh, in this uh, experience. 
activity. It's, it's interactive exercises, uh, 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 lectures, very interesting lectures, uh, uh, competition sometimes, a uh, friendly one. Uh, uh, as well, for me, the very interesting one was the speaker session when you have uh, like uh, speakers from uh, the industry. Um, big names from uh, Johnson & Johnson or UN agency or Procter & Gamble uh, and you listen to practical and, uh, and a very operational relevant uh, uh, example. The whole experience, it, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a good landing after the virtual one. It paved the way uh, to what to expect uh, next uh, uh, intellectually and uh, uh, socially as well. Uh, um, I, I'm still in contact with some of the people that I met uh, uh, there, although they're not ZD, ZLC. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience that you will gain uh, from it on many aspects. Uh, Thanks, Ali. So regarding uh, your thesis project, so then again, uh, students on all the three programs need to work on a thesis project. Uh, the main difference is that uh, if you're enrolled in the residential programs, uh, we will look for those projects for you. That means uh, we work with different uh, multinationals in all the different sectors. So during the summer, we reach out to the companies to see whether they have a specific uh, challenge in their supply chain uh, that they would like to offer for the students. What we do is we pair students up. So there's usually two, um, sometimes three students are working on a thesis. Uh, if you are uh, planning on joining uh, on the, from the blended program, usually uh, there's two options. As I mentioned, so some of the students do come uh, sponsored by their company. So that would be a, a project that is sponsored by your company or uh, a specific topic uh, that uh, you would like uh, to, 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 to research on. So these are the two options. So. Uh, first, uh, during your application process, in the application form, you would need to submit a proposal of what your topic would be about. And then by August 31st, we would need uh, to have an updated proposal. Some of you may uh, apply during the first round, which is in November. If you're applying now in, in May, there's also a gap between May until uh, August 31st uh, to decide and to make maybe this, uh, this updated uh, proposal better. Uh, what we will do is that uh, we will select the projects uh, by our faculty members. So that doesn't mean that if the class has 20 students, there will be 20 projects. We will choose the projects that uh, we will consider better fit for the program in supply chain. And then uh, we will have you guys uh, decide uh, which programs, uh, which uh, projects you're interested in. And then uh, we will proceed with the matching. So the idea would be uh, that we do this match in uh, September 30th and that you would start working on the project as of, as of October. This is something that it's not very clear sometimes because we say, okay, you start the program in January, but the idea is that you will have the same time that the residential students have to complete your thesis project. So even if you're uh, remotely located and um, your partner is on the other side of the world, you will be expected to meet uh, the deadlines and deliverables of the thesis project as of October onwards. This is just uh, an example of the dates of this year, uh, which uh, have been met uh, so far so good uh, by uh, the students on the two programs, so both the residential and the, uh, and the blended program. I mean, it's not like uh, you need to look into this into detail, but uh, there are some deadlines and deliverables that, uh, that we have to meet in order to make sure that the projects are going along fine. And uh, this could be uh, the profile, the typical profile of the class. So uh, this is the third generation uh, that will graduate in, in May. Uh, I always say that uh, we lack more women in the program. So I see that uh, some of the ladies that uh, have signed for the webinar today, so we would like to encourage you to, to apply. Uh, the uh, percentages are so 81% uh, men and uh, only 19 women. As for the background, so we have a big percentage of uh, people who come from an engineering background, but we welcome all the disciplines. So uh, we would not like to have a class just uh, of uh, engineers. So we have people from business economics, uh, from finance and from other disciplines. We have people uh, from uh, geography, from uh, law and business administration. We had people from political science. Uh, if you have the analytical skills and um, you would like to, to be involved in, in supply chain, uh, we welcome your application as well. So the average age in this program, uh, people are a bit senior, but uh, uh, th this is also important that I mentioned that uh, we have uh, young people uh, who have five, uh, six years of experience as well as people with 
more than 20, 25 years of experience. And usually, so 13 uh, countries are represented. Then again, so diversity for us is very important. So not only in terms of background and gender, uh, nationality, but also uh, what you're gonna bring uh, to the class in terms of uh, work experience. And this is the David. David is a classmate uh, of uh, Hanis. Uh, so he graduated at the same time last May. Uh, David is from the Czech Republic and uh, he, uh, he was working uh, for Leica before he came to the program and he moved on uh, uh, back there. Uh, he's working in Switzerland, so you can read uh, his quote. Unfortunately, I cannot see uh, uh, the top of it, so I'll let you read it. Okay. And this is where our alumni are working. Uh, maybe Hani can, can mention something, even though he wasn't very much involved in the recruitment process. He uh, knew the person that uh, was in charge of the recruitment and uh, career opportunities. Um, it, it's important uh, that, that I tell you that uh, we do not have, uh, we're not a placement agency, so we do help the students as much as we can with the process, um, with the resume, with uh, mock interviews. Uh, there's there's uh, some companies that do come and recruit from the program because they know that the talent is there but the responsibility will be yours uh, in, in that sense. Uh, but uh, we're there to help you as much as we can. Honey? Yes, uh, actually, as Marta was saying, uh, during the, 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 the master, I managed to secure and my organization offer me uh, uh, a job, which I, I, I'm currently occupying. Uh, but I attended all this career opportunity uh, session because it's, it was really quite interesting. You have a different approach from from different industry and and uh, and people try to uh, attract this uh, mind and hopefully you will be one of them. It's a, it's a, uh, as Marta said, they facilitate and they help and uh, they're not. But also you need to take into consideration that the company are interested. Uh, uh, as you see uh, so earlier, like uh, the master has its, its respectful ranking and and and. As um, again, I'm a biased when it comes to supply and logistic. I, I, I tell one to my colleague here, like for me, everything is supply chain and logistic. Uh, uh, wherever we shop, we eat, we move, it's mobility, it's circulation. And now businesses and industry try to, now seeing that more often, I understand. And of course, one of their main uh, uh, goal or target is to approach this mind uh, uh, that they have uh, top-notch uh, uh, knowledge and, and uh, academic uh, um, uh, uh, academic uh, learning curve, which is uh, 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 one of the best uh, at, the, at the time, and uh, uh, try to attract all these uh, people. From uh, my classmate, to be honest, maybe it took some time, but, but I would say most of them are already now hired, some through the LZLC, some uh, they did it on their personal uh, level, other they went back to their uh, company. Um, so you will have opportunity and it's up to you how you navigate that or how you shape it uh, uh, and try to uh, attract it as well. Okay, thanks. And if you're wondering about our application deadlines, so of course uh, the first round deadline was November 1st, but there's a, an upcoming deadline which is in two weeks, so May 1st. Uh, some of you, so if you have completed the five online courses and uh, you are decided to go ahead then you have time to apply. These are the, the requirements, of course, that uh, you have graduated from the MicroMasters program and that you completed uh, all five online courses and the comprehensive exam. We will also need the, the application form, of course, uh, with an essay that you will have to write, uh, your transcript. Uh, we will need uh, some sort of official uh, English test. Uh, here that we mentioned TOEFL IELTS, but uh, similar English tests uh, will be accepted. Uh, video statement, uh, we're looking there for your soft skills. Sometimes we, we just see that uh, students tend to read what they have on the screen. That's not what we're looking for. I mean, uh, we already have some information in writing from, from you. So we really uh, want to see you evolve and uh, how do you react and how do you uh, respond to three questions. You do not need to record those three questions right away. Uh, you, you can rehearse. But at least uh, we need to, to see a, a little bit of your personality as well. You would need to send us your resume as well as two letters of recommendation and the research proposal that uh, we mentioned about earlier. 
And also, so uh, we also told you that uh, it's, it's intensive. Uh, Hani said that uh, the program is intensive, but uh, there is also time for fun. And uh, we do plan different activities uh, among the different programs and also with the staff. So you have there some pictures uh, during Christmas. Uh, the last one is from uh, the beginning of this academic uh, year when uh, we went uh, for some fun activities uh, when it was still uh, sunny, the weather was nice the running team and also different events that, uh, that we run. So uh, all in all, uh, it's very important that, uh, that I mentioned that uh, it's, uh, these are small programs. I consider Honey my family as well. Uh, we get to know one another very well. So among the students, the faculty members and the rest of the staff. And uh, once, uh, so like uh, when I told him, Honey, would you help us uh, with the webinar, uh, telling your story, why did you come uh, to the program? He did not hesitate. The same goes for those students who recommend other students for the program and also who come with their companies uh, to recruit uh, uh, current students and also who bring in uh, different uh, thesis projects. So in a nutshell, that's uh, a bit all. Uh, so now we will open uh, the time for Q&A. So Sira, back to you. Hello again. <laughs> Uh, so the first question is from Camilo Perez. Uh, he says, hello, Marta. I want to know if for the COVID situation, the, date are go the dates are going to change. Thanks. Camilo, we, we think and we hope that uh, we will be able to start our programs uh, normally. But uh, since this is uh, an evolving situation at, the, at this point in time, we don't know. We hope that we will be able to do it. If not, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, there will be an option to maybe delay the start of the program or start with the sessions online to then continue with the residential programs. Uh, by January, we hope that uh, for sure the situation uh, will be back to normal. So if you're planning on enrolling uh, on the blended program, uh, we hope that uh, we won't have to get to a plan B or to have a second option. Thank you, Marta. Uh, next question is from Daniel. When is the application due and is it okay to apply to both MIT and CLC? Daniel, hi. Uh, we spoke recently. So yes, uh, you can apply uh, when you open your, uh, when you start creating uh, your account on GradApply, you can apply to all the, the centers that offer the, uh, the training. So the blended program is only offered by uh, MIT, Zaragoza and uh, Malaysia. So if you're planning on applying for the blended program, you can take all the three if you're uh, looking for uh, to have better options of being admitted. If you're looking to be in admitting, uh, admitted to the residential program, which I think is your case, uh, then you can check all the cases and be uh, checked for all the different programs if you wish. So yes, you can apply to multiple centers at the same time, so you do not need to submit your application multiple times. Okay, thanks. Uh, next question is from Mauli Hope Konu, and he says, hello, Marta, may I know what the video statement entails? Um, would one recommendation letter assist me to meet the admissions requirement? Okay, so for the video statement, uh, so there, there will be a, the, the system, once you create your, your account on GradApply, uh, you will uh, find the specifications of what's needed in the video statement. The video will prompt you to reply to three questions. Uh, mainly it's uh, why do you want to uh, uh, continue your education and do a master's degree in supply chain? What are your expectations uh, after the program? What are your uh, biggest challenges? So these are the sort of questions that, that you will get in the video. As for the recommendation letters, uh, it's true that uh, we're asking for two recommendation letters. And uh, the idea would be to have one uh, from academia and one from industry. But then again, it will depend on, uh, on your age and uh, whether you finished your studies recently or maybe 20 years ago. So if you can only get uh, two from uh, previous uh, supervisors, that's also fine. But that's what we're looking to have. So if it's possible, then uh, one from each. If not, if you're also young and uh, you do not have much experience, then two from your professors as well. Okay, thanks. Diego Campos and more people on the chat, uh, they are asking about financial aid and scholarships for the blended program. Okay, Diego, thank you for asking. So I'm afraid the uh, blended program does not have any financial aid associated with. At the moment, only the residential program and the global supply chain program have uh, scholarships and uh, loans available to admitted students. 
Camilo Perez is asking uh, about the research project. I would like to know more about the research project. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea, well, maybe Honey can, uh, Honey, would you like to enlighten us about the research project? Yes, I, 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 I understand. Uh, it's not very much elaborated, the question, but I will try to give a probably more widen view. Uh, and again, as, as, as I always try to be, I would be honest about it. For me, that was the pre thesis project was this like boogeyman and like the ghost that I'm always trying to <laughs> hide from. Um, it's, 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 it's a challenging in a way uh, to come up with the idea or to, to try to find your way about it. Uh, um, I can like recommend or advise, uh, you need to find something that interests you uh, uh, because you will spend a lot of time on it. You need to find something that you could be relevant to your work as well. Uh, if you're planning to go back to your uh, 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 company or organization, if you want to plan a, a career change or like a position change, uh, whatever, try to find something that can uh, give you more uh, knowledge about this new uh, uh, path that uh, uh, you want to take. Again, for me, it was the whole thing since I read the, 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 the requirement for the application. I was like, no, this is project. But it's, it's, it's not as, as, as heavy uh, as it sounds. It's a learning curve in many ways. Uh, as Marta was mentioning, because probably I had people, uh, uh, my, my, my thesis made, let's say, uh, they were in different places in different time zones. Uh, uh, so communication uh, could be a challenge, but uh, it was a learning curve for all of us actually, how to deal with with different people that you've never met uh, 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 and how you manage your way uh, uh, within a team. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have more specific question, I'm happy to answer Camilio, but that's in a more overall uh, uh, idea about this uh, thesis project. Thank you, Hani. Stephanie was asking exactly the same. Uh, she wanted to know more about the project, so I guess this is already answered. And uh, Mauricio is asking, uh, how would it be if I already have the MicroMasters? Okay, Mauricio, so thanks again for your question. Uh, so if you have the uh, MicroMasters credential already and uh, you're ready to apply, then uh, you can submit all your application materials by uh, May 1st, which is the deadline. Uh, so then again, uh, you will need to go on to grad apply and create uh, your account and start uploading all the documentation needed. So your scores in the five online courses and the comprehensive exam, the resume, the letters of recommendation, the video statement. Uh, so given that uh, we only have uh, 15 days uh, to go and that it may take some time, uh, do not worry if you cannot meet the May 1st deadline. Uh, we can extend the deadline by a few days. Uh, so if you have that problem of not being able to gather all the information, that's okay. We know that uh, universities are closed, are not easy also to, to get some of the transcripts and et cetera. So we're flexible in that sense. Thanks, Marta. Stephanie has another question. Uh, what is this class schedule? Can I work at the same time? Oh, hello, Stephanie. Uh, honey, you want to... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> honey, stay here. <laughs> And um, actually, I'm a living example of this making it happen. Uh, and to be honest, uh, when I did it, uh, I was in Nairobi, in Kenya, and I was working for Somalia as well. So my work involved a lot of travels. Uh, uh, and sometimes I had to do some uh, exam or classes from uh, Somalia with the connection was a bit challenging. Uh, but it's, it's, it's manageable. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, your social life will get smaller and smaller. And I was telling my colleague or my friend, like, I don't know how my life it is without uh, the MicroMaster uh, in it. Uh, you get used to it. You need to find the balance. I was, uh, some things you, we will have to, like, uh, check uh, on a daily basis. Other on the weekend, you have to have, uh, have like, uh, a discipline session about your study. And of course, to, to free your time for, for the exam and, and submit everything on time. I, again, I'm a living example of this. Time. I'm a bit chaotic person, to be honest, uh, but you learn a bit about time management, about discipline, and uh, you definitely can find uh, uh, your way about this. Thanks, Annie. So yes, uh, while uh, over uh, taking the MicroMaster, yes, you, you can, of course, uh, work at the same time. Once you start uh, on the blended program, uh, since you will be in the country on a student visa, yeah, you're not allowed to work. Uh, and also it's going to be uh, quite hectic because the program is very intensive. So while you're doing the MicroMaster, yes, no problem. Uh, while you're in Zaragoza and FMIT, 
you won't be able to combine it with work activity. Okay, thanks. Adiyid has some questions. Uh, IDP has canceled all the IELTS examination in India till the 3rd of May, but the deadline of the, of the blended program is the 1st of May. So is it possible to extend the deadline for some time? It would be helpful if you can allow some other examination like Duolingo test as English proficiency proof. Okay, Ardit. So uh, one question, because uh, this this would be a question for you. Maybe you can uh, answer on the on the chat as well. Uh, I believe that uh, you may have had your education in English, so that's also something that that in some cases we do not need uh, the official scores because some people have uh, undertaken their education in English, and also some people have been working in English as well. So if this is the case, uh, I've never seen uh, an Indian student uh, whose English is not good, then uh, you can consider the, uh, the, um, the English requirement waived. Great, thank you, Marta. Uh, Diego has another question. How different are the five online courses of MicroMaster from the first semester of CLOC program? Is much deeper by far the CLOC program curricula of first semester? Yeah, it goes uh, much into detail. Uh, let's just say that uh, the first period of the uh, of the program, the A term, uh, which focuses on uh, systems and methods, is very in intensive. If you were to speak with any of the current students on the residential program, uh, they would tell you that uh, it is very intensive. Uh, the uh, online courses that they give you the the fundamentals, uh, which are uh, further developed in the residential program. Thanks. Uh, Sumit, does MicroMaster help to qualify for a residential program? And if, uh, you, you can actually apply for both programs if you wish. Uh, if you have uh, the five online courses, then you can apply for the blended and for the residential. If you have SEOX, so the course that is uh, been going on at the moment, uh, that uh, you can also use it in lieu of uh, GMAT or YERI. We will look into that uh, if you do not have uh, the analytical skills, if you do not come from, uh, from an engineering background. So if you have uh, that one course, that will also help us uh, assess your, your application. So uh, definitely, yes. Okay, and the last question, uh, Alejandra says, after gaining the MicroMaster credential, how much time do I have to apply to the blended master? So there are two rounds uh, every year. So one is in November, November 1st and the second is uh, May 1st. So depending on when you finish, then uh, you will have to see which deadline you can apply for and uh, which academic year uh, you would be uh, ready to start with. Uh, thanks, Marta. I have another question here from Hasid. Uh, hi, I need to know about the admission criteria. If anyone has not very much impressive grades in MicroMasters, since I'm a working professional on a job requiring 50% travel, I have a decent GRE score to complement my MicroMasters degrees. Okay, so for the blended program, uh, we do look into the five uh, online courses and we're looking at at least 80% uh, score uh, in all five courses and the MicroMaster, uh, the comprehensive exam overall. Uh, if you were to apply to the residential program with uh, your decent GRE score, that, that would be a different matter. But for the blended program, yes, we, took, we take uh, into account the uh, five online courses and the comprehensive exam. Okay, thank you. I think that's it. We don't have more questions on the chat. So thank you. Can I, can I say one thing? Uh, yes, and, and I want to say one more thing. <laughs> Sorry, honey. What's the intake number? What's the intake number? You mean the number of students that, that, that will be in the class? It varies. It's usually between uh, 12 to 17, 18 people. Uh, for the current academic year, so for the people who will join in, in January, uh, we already have uh, seven students who were admitted and accepted our offer during the first round uh, deadline. And we're hoping that uh, many or more of you will apply for the second round. Okay, I think that was the last one. <laughs>
So, honey, go ahead. Yes, and, 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 and seeing all this question, I, I, I see and I understand that it's all more relevant to administrative things. Uh, but what I want to highlight is, is, uh, is, is everyone, it's, it's the whole experience, it's the package. Don't worry about your supply chain knowledge. You, it, it's a granted that you will get it. It's literally, you will get it and you will be showing off of, of, of your supply chain uh, uh, knowledge in that aspect. But again, it's the package, it's the whole experience as a, a as a, as a whole, as a, as a lump sum, uh, you will gain a lot of friends, you will gain classmates, you will be networking, you will learn a lot about the, the, uh, uh, dealing with people, managing people, communicating with people, and most importantly, you will learn a lot about uh, uh, yourself as well. So then get stuck in this technicality, and uh, uh, I hope the best of luck for all of you. I will share also my LinkedIn uh, 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 with Marta, and then guys, feel free to approach me as well for any other question, uh, and, and I will be happy to answer it. Good luck to all. Thank you, Hani. Uh, Marta, just a second. Uh, Ugo is asking, the title of the residential program is the same of the blended? The, the degree, I guess, uh, he means. Uh, so, well, yes, uh, the, it's going to be the same degree. Okay, that's all by my side. Okay, so then it's my turn to thank you for attending uh, today, uh, attending today's webinar. And then again, uh, I'm available for any questions that uh, you may have. Uh, if you have any more questions, you have the admissions email address on the screen. Uh, we will share the presentation and uh, there was also going to be a recording of, uh, of this webinar available. So anything that, uh, that you need, any questions that uh, we did not cover today, please feel free uh, to ask, to reach out to, to me, to Honey. Uh, if you would like to explore the presidential programs as well, I can put you in touch with uh, current students. And uh, maybe in, in a few months, uh, I hope to, to, to see you in our facilities. So thanks again. Bye. Bye, everyone.